All right, guys, go ahead and fire away. Now, Ed, when you go back and review everything from the Buffalo game, I'm sure you saw a lot of good, but you know, what did you see that you guys need to improve upon going forward? Yeah, I mean, there's just, I think a couple plays here and there kind of changed the momentum of the game. If you look at the throw to Xavier down the sideline, or even uh, throw in the second, um, in the third quarter on the second down where I hit Trav, I could probably hit Noah if I just wait on the, the progression. Um, just little plays like that are, are what make the difference in a, a big game. And so just stuff that you have to go back, look look at, learn from, and try to get better at. Patrick, what's the difference in mindset just from all these games where you find a way to now, this time you didn't, and you have the sense of I don't know if it's urgency that you alluded to the other day, but what is it that changes in your mind after that? Um, I think just having, a, like you said, a sense of urgency from the beginning of the games. Uh, I feel like offensively we can be better the way we start and the way we play throughout the entire game um, because you can tell whenever a lot of times in the fourth quarter when we need a score, we go right down the field and score. Um, and so if we can play the entire football game like that, um, it won't put us in these situations where we're in one-score games at the very end. Do you think it's easier to get everybody's attention when it, there's a consequence with a loss? Um, I mean, yeah, we have a lot of veterans, so that they know what we need to do. But obviously, a loss kind of heightens everybody's uh, attention to detail. I think that would be the biggest thing. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, we know it's a long season. Um, we, you lose a football game here and there, but you try to learn from that and uh, try to be better the next week. Patrick, uh, Noah Gray has one of the highest catch percentages in the league. And when you throw it to him, it's almost always a completion. What is it about him that allows for that? Yeah, he just does, he does everything the right way, um, and um, he's learned a ton from Trav, and so he knows how to kind of work within the rules of the offense and get himself open, and um, he's just a guy that's going to be in the right spot. So as a quarterback, you know if, you, if you're if you going to give him the football, um, he's going to make the play happen, and so uh, uh, he's not going to talk a lot. He's going to he's gonna come to work, do his job, um, but at the same time, you, those are the guys you want on your team because you know that uh, he's going to do whatever it takes to win. Hop doesn't seem to be the type of player who eases back into things. What are your expectations for Pacheco when he comes back. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you said it. I think it's gonna be us trying to hold him back because he's a guy that wants to wants to be out there as much as possible. And he wants to play, but um, same time he wants to win, and he knows the the long term goal that we have, and um, our goal is to get him back as quickly as possible, but at the best time for him and his body, so that we can have him for the long haul. And so, um, whenever that is, uh, I'm, no, I know he'll be ready, and he'll have that he'll be that energizer bunny that everybody everybody loves to see. Here, here, here. Obviously, developed a relationship with Beach, um, brings in a re receiver, Thornton, to the practice squad. What do you like uh, about his potential? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, in season, haven't watched a ton of film on him, but just from the highlights that I have seen, I mean, a ton of big playability. Uh, someone that, as a big frame, I didn't realize how, how tall uh, he was until he got in the building. Uh, I'm excited to see him on the practice field um, uh, working, and I'm sure guys like Carson and them will give him chances downfield, and we'll get to see that speed. And so, um, a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and I think uh, it would be good to get him worked in uh, within the offense and see what he can do. When you guys have uh, your script to start a game, and then you said, like, first drive, you had the, the interception. When you get back, now you're down 6 nothing. You go right back to the script, you have to make adjustments, and does it kind of just mess up the, the plan you guys had? Um, not necessarily. I mean, interceptions are always um, – uh, kind of bump in the road because you, you don't want to have those. Um, but at the same time, I think Coach Reed does a good job of um, going back to it, going back to the, the way we want to um, go about a game. I mean, obviously with them scoring from the interception, um, you have to try to find ways to get back in the end zone and get to keep the game close, keep it tied, um, or whatever that is. And so um, um, I don't think it does much. I mean, I know for me it's just you keep firing. Um, I mean, you don't want to throw interceptions, but at the end of the day, once they happen, there's nothing you can do about it. You just learn from it and try to be better the next time. Coach mentioned a couple weeks ago, uh, I think it was the Monday night game, it was like only like three rushes for Kareem in the first half and kind of got back to it in the third quarter and maybe didn't run as much as you guys maybe would have liked this time around. Mm -hmm. When you're in the middle of the game, I mean, are you thinking about how many times you've run it in the past and all that kind of stuff when you guys are on the headsets and talking on the the pads over there on the sideline or just how does that kind of work during the game? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, just um, obviously we didn't run a ton of plays this last game. Um, so um, with the interception kind of stalling out that drive quickly and then kind of how the, the flow of the game was, we probably threw the ball more than we might have wanted to from the beginning of the game. Um, I thought Coach did a good job of getting the run game back going um, as the game went on, which opened up other things as well. And um, I think more than anything, just having with the offensive line that we have and uh, those three guys in the middle getting the running downhill is hard for defenses to uh, account for. And so if we can run the ball downhill, it opens up everything else. And um, I think Kareem and all those guys do a great job of doing that. So um, you got to have to play the flow of the game. You talk about it on the sideline, but I mean, all of us have full belief on whatever coach called, we're going to go out there and execute.
your early thoughts here on, on Carolina and, and the challenge that they present? Yeah, I mean, first off, great defensive coordinator. Uh, I played against him when he was in Denver. Um, very smart, very intelligent, and kind of gets his guys in the right position. And um, they have a lot of talented players. Um, I think you've seen that these last few weeks is that they play hard um, and, and they're playing better football as the season goes on. And so um, it'll be a great challenge for us going there to play them. Um, they're coming off two wins and a bye, so they're going to be hungry. Um, and so it'll be a, a great opportunity for us to go out there and try to find a way to get a win. Bye. Just with Xavier, Andy referred to this a little bit, and you have two just little things on each of the deep connections that are so close to happening. In your mind, what, what are the commonalities or what, what, are, what are the things that are just so close that you should be able to get through? Yeah, I mean, I think you've seen as the season's gone on that he – He's playing faster. He has more. He has more confidence. It's about me being on the same page as him. And uh, I mean, I can I can sit here and we can practice it all we want. But until we start doing it in the game, um, there's nothing much more that I can really say about it. But I'm I'm excited for it. I believe it's going to start happening. Um, and once it starts happening, the offense is going to really uh, take off. And do you agree? Is that the right thing that each play has been just a little bit different? Yeah, yeah. Different? They're all they're all different type of plays. Um, some of them he's the first read. Some of them it's kind of an alert type of read. Um, but I think more than anything, you look at the film, you see him getting open, you see him utilizing his speed, um, and then now it's about me making the throws where he can score touchdowns, um, and we score those touchdowns, like I said, it, it changes the entire ball game. Well, the last three, Nick, Nate, and Steve. Yeah. Nick. Uh, Patrick, for the guys that haven't been here, the rookies and some of the other young guys that haven't been on these runs, how do you kind of help them as a leader ramp up to this point <laughs> where the standard is come playoff time? Yeah, no, this is, this, this is kind of the, the point where you have to start taking off. You have to start kind of building. I mean, you want to do it all season long, but it's a long season. And as we kind of get to this, this back stretch, you want to be playing your best football going into the playoffs. And so um, as you get close to Thanksgiving um, and everything like that, you want to start showing progression and stuff that we've worked on throughout the year. Um, and I feel like we're, we're close, close to doing that, but we want to keep building and keep getting better so we're playing our best football at the end of the season. Thank you. Patrick, how much do you think that first half for Xavier can be momentum? for the rest of the season given beyond just the deep balls, but obviously interworking and getting mixed into the offense and obviously non <laughs> deep ball uh, moments. Yeah, I think I think more than anything is you saw the confidence in that he was playing with, which you could tell that he has he had more confidence within himself and what he can do within the offense. Um, and when he, whenever he's playing confidence, confident not thinking, he's playing fast, and it's hard for people to account for how fast he is. And so um, I'm excited for him. I thought that was a good jump off point. We got to keep him more involved in the offense throughout the second half. Um, uh, but this, at the same time, I think that, that's going to help the offense go. Steve? Patrick, uh, you mentioned offensive line. Uh, there's no secret your line might able to struggle with this a little bit. Uh, do you find it being harder for you to be more patient when you know that they can have those no, I think that's just on that's on me more than anything. I think even, even if you look at the first interception, if I really just, even though it wasn't open, if I just sit in the pocket and I run up in the pocket, I don't get kind of slung where I throw the ball over the top of Noah. I hit Noah in stride, and it's a big play. And so um, that's just something that I have to continue to work on um, is being able to settle in those 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 spots in the pocket where I can make those throws, um, not forcing uh, myself to run or scramble too fast. Um, and then whenever I do need to scramble, i got to be smart with the football and make, make plays. And I thought I had good points of that during the game, but obviously not, not enough. So um, I'll continue to work on that throughout the season um, and so that we can, uh, be, like I said, playing our best football at the end of the year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt.